from the Senate is flanked by the Emeritus AG. It's not by coincidence that when the country needed laws, they picked Kiraitu and Orengo. It's not by coincidence that the Senate of this Republic has three senior councils. It's not a coincidence. I was thinking out aloud, and uh, Chair, uh, allow me to continue thinking aloud. Is there a place you can find council of presidents, of retired presidents in Kenya, where they, we can operate as wise men and can sit, like in the case of Germany, they sit. It's in the BBI report. Oh, it's in the BBI report. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, just. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. And they are not even paid anything. Yes. But <laughs> <laughs> because they already have some perks under the retirement yeah, benefits. No, no, no. But in the case of the German Senate, they find a place where they can sit as as council of elders. And that's why I agree with the, with the party leader, my party leader, that if you want to make it a truly a house of elders, make it truly a house of elders, and the leader of opposition, I'm not sure what your recommendations are in terms of where they will sit. But all the constitutional 15 co uh, um, Article 15, 15 commissions and PAC and PIC should be under the leader of opposition. That's what I think uh, the party leader wanted mm. to say, mm. but we had, uh, we had not mentioned mm. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Well done. Uh, I, I'll ask uh, Farah to talk about security, safety, because I notice that you, you require whoever is a president within three months to give a statement, an account of how safe the country is. Uh, so without security, and by the way, my own uh, um, uh, very strong feeling about a free port will actually even address insecurity in our region. All the problems we have, I think it's about time we reconsidered our presence in Somalia, seriously, within the framework of AMISOM and what have you. It used to be our policy that uh, the frontline countries in the region, mainly Kenya, Ethiopia, Djibouti, would not send troops into Somalia. A lot of things have since happened. Um, and, and I think that we, we need now to see uh, how do we guarantee security of our citizens. That's the most important thing. Uh, and if you go and reflect on what I've just suggested about a free port, you see that will be the answer to this problem within our border. But uh, Farah? Yeah. Okay. There's something that uh, IBC has raised under Article 89, and I thought I should mention because my deputy party leader has also mentioned the limitation of boundaries is between eight and twelve years. Uh, if your proposal is to retain, what they are doing is going to be in conflict with your proposals. My own view, and possibly even the party, is that the limitation for purposes of the eight years should be stood down, and for purposes of what you are doing. We take it to the 12 year. Let's consider the 12 years at the 12 year period as opposed to the eight year. Eight year. So that in the 12th year, which will be the year 2024, we can consider the limitation of boundaries. The third one is the. All right, and our reporter Vincent Odor is currently on standby and will be bringing us a more detailed report later on. But away from that, the Chinese national who is currently quarantined at his residence in Nakuru County does not have the COVID-19 virus. Nakuru County Health Department says the man who arrived in Kenya on the 10th of this month from China is currently under observation and will remain in quarantine until the 14th day incubation period lapses. More than 200 health workers at the Nakuru Level 5 Hospital have received training on dealing with suspected cases of the COVID-19 virus, even as the Ministry of Health has intensified screening for this virus at all points of entry. An emergency operations centre is currently monitoring the evolution of the virus in China and the rest of the world, while 5,000 personnel protective equipment has been procured with help from the US aid. Members of the public have been urged to maintain basic hand and respiratory hygiene and to avoid close contact with people suffering from acute respiratory infections. We are here to clarify on the issue of uh, a Chinese national who is married to a Kenyan and stays here in Akuru, in a village called Ingobol, just across. He arrived from China on 10th February, that is nine days ago, at 11.30 p.m. 
and uh, he was driven from Nairobi in an Uber, whose contacts of the driver and the number plates we have. And uh, we visited him yesterday in his place. The county of government of Nakuru has uh, has talked on PPEs and thermoguns, and therefore our health staff visited uh, him well dressed, and they interviewed him and examined him. First and foremost, he does not have any signs and symptoms, and therefore his condition does not meet the standard case definition for coronavirus infection. He was screened at JKIA and released because he didn't have any problem. When he came to his home, he self-quarantined himself in his servant quarter. He is married to a Kenyan, and they have two children, one aged five and another one aged one, and, and the, the spouse and the children are in good condition. And the man in question who is a Chinese is also in good health. Well, meanwhile, the death toll from the coronavirus disease has jumped past 2,000 after 136 small people died. This brings the total number of confirmed cases in mainland China to 74,185. The, de the death toll rose to 2004, with most of the deaths in central Hubei province, where the virus first emerged in December before spiraling into a nationwide epidemic. In its daily update, the National Health Commission reported 1,749 new cases of people infected with the virus nationwide nationwide, the lowest number of new cases this month. A study released by the Chinese officials said most patients have mild cases of the illness and health officials have described the slowing numbers as an indication that the outbreak is under control. However, the World Health Organization has cautioned that it is too early to tell if the decline will continue. <laughs> While away from that, the High Court has today suspended the orders to deport four Chinese nationals issued by Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi. The four were set to be deported after they were arrested following a public outcry over their actions while on duty at the Chez Wu restaurant in Kilelesho in Nairobi. A video that went viral showed one of the Chinese nationals caning an employee of the restaurant while others cheered in the background. The case against the four had been scheduled to be high on March 4th, but the deportation orders were signed by the cabinet secretary just hours after the courts allowed the police de to detain the four. The court has given the DPP until Friday to file responses on the matter. The matter has been certified as urgent and directed that the case be heard on February 25th. Well, the Machakos People's Park is brimming with activity as private and public sector stakeholders converge to showcase opportunities for youth empowerment. An estimated 5,000 people are expected to participate in this year's Machakos Youth Empowerment Conference, which is focusing on enhancing technical and vocational competencies. And our uh, business editor, Julian Samboko, is currently on standby to bring us more details on that. A very good afternoon to you, Julian. Uh, what, what are we looking at with respect? regards to this conference today. Many thanks, Zainab, as you rightly pointed out, we are the Machakos People's Park, where we have been camping since morning, focusing on the Youth Empowerment Conference. It has been focusing on matters of linkages, creating opportunities, and gainful employment for the youth. And just before I delve into that, I'd like to join uh, Governor Arthur Mutua, who is right next to me, to give us some insight into why this particular conference is this significant. Governor, thank you for your time. And just give us a summary of why, particularly, this conference. This conference is important because the majority of our young people are sitting at home without the skill skills and the know-how of how to get more money to their pockets. And I want to empower youth to know that you don't have to wait for somebody to fix you for a job, that you can pursue higher education and we are providing free uh, community, uh, these colleges 
the, all the uh, in colleges by the county are free of charge. Now we've got the TVITs also, we're giving scholarships so that people can go to school and you get a skill. We've got people here who are teaching people how to get jobs. We've got people providing employment. Today we have provided 500 jobs to young people who have come today. And the journey continues because we have to give opportunities to young people and to tell them it doesn't matter where you're born, that you have a right to live a good life if you work hard. And we have to show you how you can be able to do it. And I know you're pressed for time. Just uh, my final question. Beyond the conference, what happens? Beyond the conference, we'll do, we'll follow up. This is the first of many conferences. I want to be able to hold this in all the villages in Machakos, basically all the world in Machakos, so that people can get empowered. I want to bring more companies. We have thousands, hundreds of companies that have come into Machakos. I want them to employ my youth so that my youth get, get empowered and are able to be able to move forward with their lives. You know, you can't just wait to be given things. You have to go for them. And I also want to change the stories of Kenya to not be just about BBI, to be just about uh, gaining position of power, it should be about money and economics. How do we get our young people employed? Parents have spent money and yet they're just sitting at home and their people have, have no jobs. So I want our people to know that it is possible and they have leaders who care about them. That this is our time now as young people to take over this country by ensuring that we are empowered, not only politically but also economically. Thank you for your time, Governor. And that is Machakos Governor, Governor Alfred Muto, who has been giving us insight into what has been transpiring today and what will be going on beyond this. We will be keeping tabs with this story just to bring you more in subsequent bulletins. Back to you, Zayda. All right. Thank you so much, Julian Mboko there. Well, away from that, at least two people have been killed after a bus headed to Nairobi and Mandara was attacked by gunmen in Mandara North. The Moyali Raha bus was attacked at Garab Ikai Center in Ola location. And we're now joined by Ahmed Maulid on phone for the details. Ahmed, uh, what more details have you been able to gather from this particular incident? Thank you, Zainab. As you said, uh, Moyali Raha bus attacked by unknown asylum at an area called Lakai Center near all location, Mandera North constituency, that is Mandera County. And as of now, as we speak, two confirmed dead, several others injured, though, uh, though the death or the casualties may, may further increase as, uh, uh, later. Uh, one, of the, one of the victims whom, whom I spoke to earlier told me that two people confirmed and two, com two, two people confirmed dead and several others injured, including who is in critical condition is a bus driver. We are told an gun, unknown gunmen have and uh, have the, le, uh, waylaid the bus while it's on way to and uh, Banisa, Banisa town when the attack happened. The bus Moyala Raha left this morning, 8 a.m. here in Mandera town and was heading to Nairobi. The death could may may increase in 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 in, in the coming hours. Uh, so one of the one of the passengers told me that several people uh, ran for their safety, uh, ran ran for their dear lives when the attack happened. Several of them, while injured, and the, the security forces are now at the scene trying to gather the, the piece of information of what what transpired the death. Ahmed, just before I let you go, have you been able to speak to any authorities on the ground and maybe be able to get a little bit of more information on the incident? Uh, we, 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 we didn't manage to get the security or any other leaders from the county. But the, the information we are getting are from residents near the village called uh, Ola, the way the incident happened. All the information we, we got from people, the passengers themselves, who are boarding? Who are, who boarded the bus? Who are boarding the bus? Rather, and uh, when the incident happened. As of now, situation remains calm. Security forces are on the ground trying to gather the information. But as of now, but uh, but as of now, the situation remains calm and sanity has been restored as we speak now, Zainab. All right, Ahmed Maulid, they're speaking to us on phone from Mandara County. Of course, what we understand is a Mandara to Nairobi bound bus has been attacked by unknown assailants and uh, two people so far have been confirmed dead. Uh, several others have been injured in that particular incident. We're yet to receive more information on that uh, uh, particular incident and uh, we will be joining Ahmed Maulid uh, later on in our subsequent bulletins just to get more information on that uh, incident in Mandara County. 
Well, away from that, Marsabit County government has announced major cuts in government expenditure for the current financial year. Well, in response to the adamant stance of the National Treasury on the pending bills clearance, the developed unit says it will suspend a number of development projects for this fiscal year, cut down on recurrent expenditures, and possibly freeze all non-essential travel, training and conferences. Mamo Ali reports. While speaking during his State of the County address at the Marsabit County Assembly on Tuesday, Governor Mohamud Ali revealed that the devolved units have been forced to put in place austerity measures to help save the county from the grips of a severe cash crisis. We will be forced to suspend a number of projects planned for this year, cut down on all the recurrent expenditures and possibly consider a freeze on non-essential travels, training and conferences. Due to the cash crisis, many county workers have had to contend with the delayed salaries for the last three months. Health facilities are also going without drugs because there is no money to procure. Governor Ali appealed to the workers to remain patient as the government works on alternative modalities to pay them the dues owed to them. He noted that the devolved unit has already out for some funds that will go into paying their salaries for January 2020. The county, however, will sustain some of the key flagship projects. The governor, however, pointed out that the drug shortage is due to challenges with KEMSA. The restriction is affecting timely supply of drugs and Council of Governors has called for the review of this legislation. Hopefully, hopefully this challenge will be sorted out. Governor Ali held that his government inherited pending bills amounting to 1.2 billion, which were progressively budgeted for and payments began over the previous fiscal year. The county's eligible pending bills by June 2018 stood at 485 million shillings. Out of the outstanding bill, only 374 million shillings was allocated in the current budget to cater for the part of the pending bills. Mamo Ali, NTV, Marsabit. All right, thanks, Mamo. Now, police in Wajir have been surviving without power at the station and staff quarters for three weeks now due to a faulty connection. Residents are now raising concerns over their security and that of the police in light of recent terror attacks. Our correspondent, Nurdin El Moge, with the details. Sunset in Wajir means another night in darkness for police officers and their families residing at the staff quarters. The power outage, which was allegedly caused by an unspecified wiring problem, has left security agencies vulnerable. The local leaders now accusing the national government of neglecting the people. Uh, Matiangi is involved in, in politics than, than Kudumia Wananchi. According to sources within the police in Wajir, the electrical problem requires 57,000 shillings, which the officers were supposed to raise from their salaries. The Wajir East OSPD, Brian Kipchoge, acknowledged the situation, adding that the government is aware of the situation. <laughs> Despite the hardship associated with the region, the terrorist bullet, the ID attack, officers in Wajir confront a lack of electricity and water supply, plus poor housing condition, properly raising the question, where should the war on terror begin? Nurdin al Moge, NTV, Wajir County. All right, thank you so much, Nuruddin, for that report. At this point, we take a very short break here on NTV at 1. We still have a lot to line up for you. Stay with us.
Sasa jana madona na kutupinya mtu mbao. Mimi nimemjenga dhao. Gari ilikuwa ilikuwa sala za karembe nimjenga 17 hapa tena dhati yangu. The way this position is tiring. Nimechoka. Call for long at one shilling fifty cents to all networks. Ah, Dial star five four four hash to subscribe. Telcom moving with you. New blue band peanut butter made with one hundred percent pure peanuts and a good source of omega six. Grow healthy and happy kids with new blue band peanut butter. It feel good, Coca-Cola and food Monday to Sunday. We are chasing test. Let's just grab a bike, the excuse to drink Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Every single day. So we feel forever be real. Together stay free whatever the No, we can't stop. We want to test the Building tips for general construction should be bought from reliable sources, should not get dry before the specific curing time given for best results, must be kept certified. Exactly 50 kilograms guaranteed in each bag. Adding strength to Kenya's landmarks, power for specialized constructions, cementing the nation's future. Simba Cement, the strength and pride of Kenya. Now also produced in Nakuru and Mombasa. Fit Me Foundation from Maybelline, New York. Fits your unique tone and texture. Blurs pores. Stop shine. For your most natural matte. Fit Me Matte and Coreless, only from Maybelline, New York. Rashes again? Kiss Kids Diapers. Kiss Kids, no rashes. Kiss Kids, no rashes. Bye bye, rashes. Buy diapers. Choose Kiss Kids. All right, thank you so much for staying with us. You're watching NTV at One. ABSA Bank Kenya PLC has officially launched the ABSA ticker at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. It marks the successful conclusion of the brand transition program from Barclays Kenya to ABSA Bank Kenya PLC. This means that in place of BK Group PLC that was appearing for the bank at the NSC, you will henceforth see ABSA. The change of name follows a 2018 decision by the parent company, ABSA Group Limited, to rebrand all its operations in 12 markets across Africa to ABSA. It followed a decision by Barclays PLC to reduce its majority shareholding in Barclays Africa Group Limited to 14.9% and the subsequent renaming of Barclays Africa Group Limited to ABSA Group Limited. <laughs> Many colleagues have also worked for the bank many years. We have colleagues who have worked 30, 40 years for the bank. Um, so what we are doing is we are working closely with all the stakeholders. Um, we celebrate the history, um, that 104-year history that we have here in Kenya. We have deep roots. We're, we're systemically important in this economy. And, and I think now we're just moving uh, you know, into this new transition of AMSA, where we're proud to be an African bank. We're proud to be a Kenyan bank. I would like to assure all our shareholders that their investments in our business are sound and that they can look forward to even better returns as we continue to execute our strategy. In particular, I'd like to reassure our minority shareholders, and some of them might be present here, that the shareholding structure remains the same. For us, as Africans, there can be no doubt that whilst others, Chairman, have sought to de-risk themselves and exited our markets. We are brave, we're passionate and committed to investing in our markets. We don't want simply to be prospects for others. We're very, very happy that we've gotten to this point where we now, across the continent, can now trade under one brand. So there is one APSA, one brand, one vision, one purpose, endless possibilities that we are looking to bring to life to all of you 
and the people of Kenya and most importantly to our customers and, and our clients. All right, let's now take a look at stories and making headlines in the world of sports. And Sean Cardovillis is here for that, Sean. Thank you very much, Zain. A very good afternoon to you. Now, Liverpool's defence of their Champions League title hangs in the balance after Saul Naguez's early strike.